Das ist ein so in, in, in so chant that you feel deadly before the court in a state of such high fever. That's exactly how you pronounce that word. Listen, he doesn't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing him up. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly how to pronounce it. Sure, I believe you. If you if you guys know how to how to pronounce it, pre- feel free to. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Either Gosh, the man has seen... extraordinary strength of mind or an extraordinary lack of feeling. <laughs> Dragon said, I'll take the words I've never heard of before for 300. <laughs> I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of the antechambers. Just take a man when he's down, why don't you? <laughs> well, then, counsel, are you fully prepared? Yes. One statement, one piece of evidence. I won't let Mr. Sholmes down, or Iris. And I won't waste this final chance that Susato-san has given me. I would try to slap my own face, but I have too many, (laughs) too much technology. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to, myself, between my glasses and my, like, headphones. This is going to decide the entire outcome of this trial. Very well then, under the terms I've outlined, you you may cross examine the cross examine cross examine the cross examination. What does that <laughs> You may continue the cross examination, I think. Con- <laughs> <laughs> you may resume the cross examination. I just saw cross examine the cross examination. I was like, wait, there is no way it cross- said that. There is no way. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, so we can't press anything. We just have to present one piece of evidence to we, one thing. Yeah, we have one one chance. Okay, and obviously the cat flapo mat is the thing we have to present. Obviously, uh, otherwise it'd be the biggest red herring of the entire series. It just makes you fail the game, and you have to start from the beginning. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Dragon. They did do an epic theme for the final cross examination. Bam, 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 And we can't press. We just have to do it. No pressing. Okay. Uh, well, the Sheffield and Jocelyn, the Rogar was still near the entrance to the shop. Okay. Next. Missed when Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. Next. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. Next. The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the people, so I picked it up and made my escape. Okay. Can I see the cat flap on that? Uh, that's what it looks like. Compact machine for rapid creation of small flaps and larger doors allows for cats. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of weird, but I think he just made the flap bigger. Like, is that... <laughs> go back. Keep, keep, go back. Go back. I can see him through the peephole in the door, though. No. Ugh. I think that. But how would he know how to use the cat flap o mat? Hmm. I'm not saying anything. If you've solved this mystery already, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be updated on when uh, Shad posts more information and spam one. If you think that I'm big dummy dum dum for not knowing this yet. And two, if you think that it's okay and you have compassion in your heart. Um, no judgment though. And three if both. Three if both. No, they're mutually exclusive. Um, <clears throat> so, so it is. It has I, I, to be the cat flap on that, right? I, I won't give him the hint yet, Dragon. Right? Uh, I'm not. Like, I've, I saved, <laughs> so I'm gonna let you make your choice. Oh, terrible! You're a terrible human being. Um, hmm. so this is what I think is happening. 
I think he made the flap through the peephole bigger so he could fit through it. That's excessive. I don't know if that's what actually happened. The other thing I thought originally was that Susato used the cat flap o mat to hide the third gun somewhere. And that's what we needed to figure out, but that's clearly not it if we have to present it right now. So I'm going to say, um, go back to the very last one. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. And you just want me you just want me to try my best? Is that what Dragon just said Takumi's excessive at times, not that much, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I want you to give your best your best effort. Just Oh okay, go back to the beginning. <clears throat> my best effort. Go to the very first one. Do what okay. makes sense to you. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. Mm. I need to slap my face. Yeah! Take my last slap. Do it better. Uh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. 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 Go back. Okay, go back. Oh, big dummy. Big dummy. I actually I know I know what happened. I know what happened. What? You, they use the cat flapple mat near the lock to open the door or to lock it after she had fainted. But how would he know how to use the cat flapple mat? Ugh. It would have had to be her. She used the cat flapple mat. I mean, you do know that uh, Gina oh, the, the herself state. said that she locked the door. Hmm. I appreciate the man, but I can see through people in the door, though. Mm -hmm. Dragon says he got this. Oh, uh, don't! <laughs> the pressure! Uh, okay, next. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you might as well just put your best guess, because, like... Got the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. Uh, I just feel... I'm going to be so embarrassed if I get it wrong. Ugh. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> uh, shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. Sure. Saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Sure. And she tossed the gun out of the people, so I picked it up and made my escape. <laughs> oh, gosh. I saved. Just come on. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, yeah, just use it there. Use it there. What here? Cat, cat flap on uh, that? Yeah. Objection. What on earth is that eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's my cat flap mat my lord. It makes a way for cats to get in and out of a room. I will say, if it makes you feel any better, there were two point parts places you could have presented this, and the other one was th the third statement, which the other one you're waffling with. <laughs> so they were both right. <laughs> oh man, that's why I, that's why I was waffling. <laughs> it can cut through any door you can think of and make a lit new little door in the middle of it. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. 
Small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners having to open the main door. I'm sure we can all work out that out for ourselves. Okay, then pick that up. Hello. Ah! How about? But that cat lover's contri contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there are no was no cat flap in the pawnbroker's door. Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I failed to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. Perhaps it would help if I described its function another way then. This contraption is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. I beg your pardon, a peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Winderbank had taken place. That's right, according to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, Chomps. Yes, the three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Your assistant did what? There was a people in the storeroom door, I can attest to that. Because I looked through the people myself in order to see the inside the locked storeroom. This is ludicrous! What are you trying to say? Of course there was a people in the door. I said as much in my testimony. How else could I have witnessed the crime for pity's sake? Hmm. Yes, how could you? What? Counsel, uh, uh, kindly, kindly say what you mean. Alright, it's time. Time to strike the final blow. What I mean is this, my lord. What My no sister made the people in the storeroom door. Until such time as she did, the door had no hole in it to look through. What? No! Ba -ba -ba. That's waste! This is a farce! I really suggest that the people in the door was... Yes, it was created only after the incident had taken place by the, my judicial system using this device. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions. That is a most serious act of vandalism. For which I humbly apologize, my lord. It was in the few minutes that I left the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Nevertheless, in light of this new information, it becomes apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony is riddled with holes. <laughs> Riddled with. Explain yourself, counsel. The majority of Mr. Grader's testimony appears to incriminate the defendant. It is based upon what he witnessed to the people in the storeroom door. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in the back. However, if at the time of the incident, that people did not yet exist in the door, there's no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. Uh, in short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Ugh. Order, order, order. Is, is there any credence in this re revelation? Objection. That was so tense, I, I didn't realize. <laughs> None whatsoever, as my learned friend must have surely realized. Sorry, my heat runs making a weird noise. Ex exactly! This is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me! I'm afraid not, sir. Of course it is! Do you seriously expect people to believe that plaything can cut through a solid wooden door? Oh yes, I decided to be very powerful. They can cut through even the toughest of doors. That's absurd. I don't believe it for a second. Ha ha. I had a feeling you'd say that. What? Waggy. Cooey. Time for dinner. 
she she made a door in the court. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> well. Ah. Young lady, this is the old Bailey. What does not make cat flaps in the old panel? I got the old Bailey. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not done yet, don't worry. This doesn't mean that the peephole in the storeroom door at Winderbanks was made by your machine. You have Dragon Blight in active vandalism. And there's no way you can prove that it was. But it's easy. What? The cat flaps in my cat flapper back creates all our all the thick size. And the dimension of the people of Mr. Winderbanks are an exact match. Ugh. Hehe. <laughs> Old Silky's lots for words. Excellent work, Iris. Thank you. And now it's my learned student friend's turn to be lost for words, I feel. Mm -hmm. I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your eastern island home. Well, yes, that's true. Then you may have some difficulty establishing all the facts. For the sake of argument, let's assume you, the people has the dimensions that are perfect fit for this contraption. In that case, when was the people cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. Ugh. Not hard. What is Ugh. the purpose of your line of inquiry, Lord Van Zeex? It's very simple, my lord. The defense argues that the people was created after the incident using this device. But now that the perpetrator has returned to her native land, she cannot testify to the fact. There is no proof. Ugh. And for as long as the defense remains unable to prove when the people was made, my learned friend's claim amounts to nothing more than a baseless accusation. What? Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Indeed, that is so, Lord Van Zeex. Well, counsel. I, um... Don't give up now, Runo. This is the time to create your own opening and force your way through. I don't know if I can do this, but I do know one thing. Sadasan is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. <laughs> Very well, the counsel for the defense will present evidence to support the claim made. <laughs> Proof that the people at the door of Windebeck Storm was created after the event and not before. Well, it's a picture of uh, the, her holding up Pop Windebank, obviously. But <laughs> my point is, um, see, because you can see other people, or, is, or is that not going to be enough evidence? Is it going to be like, oh, the thing is covering it? It's a tear to the side. Ugh. What's the other one? The other what? The other photo should be the same, just slightly shifted, right? Uh, the other photo? There, no, it's not shifted, remember? Because it's from the same camera. Okay. Just the stuff uh, on the table shifted. Yeah, so it's the one that's holding her up. Yeah. You can this? see the people on the other one, yeah. You can see the people in the other one. See oh, yeah, red, you can red. see it in the other one. Yeah, and you can see it in that one. Cool. There you go. Present it? Yeah. But it'd be funny if uh, Iris said, uh, it's time for you to be the great ace attorney that you... Because it's turnabout. I'm sure they use turnabout in the Japanese. Either way. What are you? A print from the detect that detective's inferno cameras again. My judicial assistant, Mrs. Adam Mikotoba, is an extremely intelligent and capable woman, which is why I never had any cause to doubt that she would have considered this scenario and made sure I had the necessary proof. Uh, the necessary proof is this photographic print, Counsel. Hmm. This print shows a scene in the shop moments after the defendant entered the premises. Yeah, right, Dragon. Agreed. And it also shows the accused mercilessly wielded a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. But, but more to the point, 
It pictures the storm door in the background. Let me see that print again. I, I don't believe it. This really is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom is completely devoid of a people of any description. Ugh. Mr. Graydon. Ugh. You couldn't possibly have witnessed the crime as you claim to have done. Because at the time it happened, there was no people in the door. Ugh. In other words, your testimony is a catalog of lies. <laughs> a catalog! Now this is some Kingdom Hearts music. Order, order, order. I have satisfied the defense of substantiating his claim behind all reasonable doubt. Y'all. This witness. Ace Attorney. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? I was just going to say, an Ace Attorney world in Kingdom Hearts 4? Oh! I mean, it's not Square Enix, so... The witness's it's testimony happened. was entirely fallacious. That's not the only thing we know now. We now know beyond all reasonable doubt. I learned friend's assistance. Guilt can no longer be denied. The women tamper with a crime scene. Hmm. But more importantly... Good lord, there's more Lord Von Zix. The defense may have established a reprehensible instance of perjury. But that is no proof that this man is a victim's killer. Yes, that's right. What? I was there at the scene, it's true. And I was shot in the arm, it's true, but that's all. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances, I am the victim here. Oh, please. No! I don't believe this. But the right, as it stands now, I don't have any definitive proof that he is the culprit. Still, he can't worm his way out of it now. Iris? You know what they say. There's no point in locking the cat's door after the cat's bolted. It's not right, Runo. I, I don't think they say that. <laughs> As Haley always says, she's just gonna speak in sayings for the rest of the game. What? No. One lies begets another. No, wait. That might have been the line I wrote for him in one of my stories. Mm. <clears throat> well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did you give false testimony to the court, but the lies you told make no sense. Make no sense? What do you mean by such a remark? What you said in your testimony. Reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. In other words, there's a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? This is provocative talk, Council. Won't you enlighten the court? Explain this alleged inconsistency. Iris is right, was right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed by the lies in the witness's statement. They show that Mr. Grader had knowledge of something that he shouldn't have known anything about, namely... The bloodstains on the coat! I picked the people. <laughs> uh, you picked the people? Apparently both of those two options work. Oh, you picked the people in your game? Yeah. Mm. The bloodstones that were present on Miss Lestrade's coat. That's right, the victim's blood spat spattered all over her when she shot him. How could he possibly have known that? Obviously, because I saw her do it through the people in the... <laughs> the 
point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. Then let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon, that you knew of the existence of the people in the storeroom door? What? Well, obviously I... Ah! Ugh! The cat got your tongue, witness. The people in the doors made after the incident occurred. Once I returned to the shop, having failed to catch the two burglars, Scotland Yard's investigators arrived immediately. Since that time, the police have been at Windebanks consistently, constantly, carrying out their investigation. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Um, well, yes, of course. Um, the place is chock full of pawned articles, and my lads have to thoroughly examine them all. So I gave the order to have the workers working around the clock and shifts so we could get through it all. Consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Graydon, could have gained access to the shop. I, I missed Dragon at some point saying, all toasters toast toast. All toasters toast toast. <laughs> Therefore, you should know nothing about the people in the storm door. The fact that its existence forms the basis of testimony is completely inexplicable. That's the ah. kind of stuff we would hear in this game. Objection! All toasters toast bread! Your, <laughs> your claims are all insubstantiated. It's like, oh. Sorry. Hold it! <laughs> toasters sometimes can toast bagels. Uh, uh, Clearly, uh, this inconsistency means you're not trustworthy as a, <laughs> as a witness. Uh, <laughs> Objection! As you all know, sometimes you may place toast back in the toaster after you've toasted it, therefore proving the fact that all toasters toast toast. Objection. <laughs> My toaster here is broken. It does not toast toast. He makes a point. <laughs> and the judge is just like, what is this toaster you speak of? <laughs> yeah, what, what is a toaster? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place to the people in the door. I wonder if is that possible. I, I didn't hear if that was an male or female. I'm going to assume it's one of yours. But we didn't hear that, um. Hello? Hello. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. <laughs> no! <laughs> Gonna have a word, please, Lord Von Zix. <laughs> he became a prepubescent girl in three seconds. Well, we couldn't hear you anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Beak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put in my report. There's really nothing more I can add to the testimony, so it's all the same to you. Permission denied. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, Von Ziegs, ruthless. <laughs> Just like, no. <laughs> you stay there, insignificant cockroach. It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> it's not all the same to me, Inspector. Not at all. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. Oof. Of, of course, sir. Oh, he's into it. Mr. Graydon. <laughs> you shouldn't have known about the existence of that people. Which can only mean that you must have been informed about it by someone else. Look. <laughs> Stop there, my learned friend. You realize, I trust, that the words you just uttered are extreme, have extremely serious implications. Yes, but the defense believes that the details about this case that Mr. Graydon claims to have seen must have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. And in fact, considering a particular clue we have, there's really only one person that it could be. 
Oof. Who is this person in question, Counselor? Who gave the witness details of the crime scene to facilitate his false uh, testimony? Uh, oh my gosh! Oh, this boon! Let me see. Do you, Let me what? see. Who's the most ridiculous? Who? It's Transfer Mason on this list, please! Please! No. Ah, fine. It was Gregsy. You think it was Gregsy? It was Tobias Gregson, yeah. I'm, I'm curious your reasoning. Uh, because they were speaking to each other earlier and he was trying to leave because he didn't want to keep getting implicated. Who was speaking to each other earlier? Uh, Edgar Benedict. Uh, oh, Actually, so you, I, I was wondering if you remember that from last stream. Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, it can only have been you, Inspector Gregson. Yeah, Gregson was telling uh, him. Me? You had better have some proof to substantiate such a rash, rash claim, my learned friend. Consider the fact that we have only been aware of Mr. Ashley Graydon's identity for the first, for the last few hours. We learned of it only during the course of the trial today. Indeed, preparations for his testimony were made with great urgency during our hour-long recess. When the police executed subpoena and brought the man here from the communication station. Until that time, Mr. Graydon would have had no idea. No inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Inkling? Are you suggesting that until that time, such time as he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it's reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people. It's only once Mr. Graydon was in the stand that he realized his position. They would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third intruder. You are suggesting to the court that while that it was whilst his trial was in progress that he received the information, so that he could commit perjury in order to save his skin. Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This this is a blooming outrage. Why would I be giving away details of investigation this fella, eh? Hmm. I was summoned to the Lordship's chambers during the recess in any case. Had you forgotten that? Quite true. I heard a number of questions regarding the events that transpired at the Pond Rookery. Which means... That the first time these two laid eyes on one another was after the proceedings resumed following the recess. Since then, they've been in full view in the stand where such illicit discussions could have possibly have occurred. Okay. Oh, I've just remembered something, Reno. What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Ginny was testifying. Oh, yes, now you mention it. Also, Dragon did a well done, I just noticed, for your, uh, figuring out that it was Gregson. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you, Dragon! When the bailiff was dispatched to retrieve Matilda's music box from the scene of the crime. <laughs> Dragon says, except when they were whispering to each other in front of everyone. <laughs> That's it. I was doing that testimony. I remember finding it strange at the time. Just a great inspector seemed to be having some kind of secret discussion. Secret discussion. It would have been possible for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. You little toe rag, you're making all this up. <laughs> you little toe rag. I'm, I'm a respectful Scotland Yard inspector for crying out yard, crying out loud. Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? Admittedly, you wouldn't have had any reason to do something like that for no gain. Dragon's is totally not sus. But <laughs> perhaps it was part of a deal of some kind. Then it starts to make more sense. You sussy baka. That's a thing they say, right? What deal, Council? I wonder perhaps... I know about the internet. <laughs> I wonder if perhaps, in exchange for details of the people at the crime scene, Mr. Graydon agreed to give a certain something to the inspector. Fish and chips. Mm. I'm sure I need not remind the inspector that if found to be true, striking a deal of any kind with a witness 
Would be considered a gross case of malfiance. Malfiance. <laughs> malfiance is my favorite uh, R&B artist. Well, I. <laughs> It's becoming clear that jumping in with accusations is the Sneepanese student's specialty. Hey, I, I don't do that. But with stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to baseless accusations, baseless charges. It's incumbent on the defense now to present evidence in support of this diabolical claim. H evidence? Just what are you proposing that the inspector demanded of the witness in return? The court must see proof of this alleged deal. If Inspector Gregson really did strike a deal with Mr. Graydon, then logically there's only one thing he could have asked for. There must be it. Bruno, do you think it could be? Yes. It's the missing link that would join all the dots together in the pu this puzzle. I must present, press you for an answer now, Council. What evidence explains the nature of this alleged dealing that Inspector Gregson made with the witness? Oh, Hachimachi. You, you, uh, save. Save? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I... <laughs> you, you don't feel confident? I have a vague idea, but it's kind of out of left field. <laughs> Uh, let's see what we have, though. Or do you want me to tell you what I think before I see the evidence? Uh, up to you. I think you think it's, it's the, the armband. <laughs> oh, I think it's the manuscript. Uh, but let's see what other options are there, because that that's like that would make sense, but it's weird that uh, Gregson would risk losing his job for it. Well, your first option is armband. It's not armband. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Possibly? But I don't think so. Uh, there's nothing in there that would make sense for it to be. I think so. Uh, no. No. No, 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 neither of those, neither it's a thing, neither, maybe the music disc, not the pouch, not the bullet, maybe the music box, and definitely not the cat flap on that. That's why I think it's a manuscript. I think it's a manuscript? I think so. It's kind of out of left field, but that's what I think. It wasn't it. <laughs> this, my lord. This shows exactly what the deal between those two men was all about. Well, Inspector, what do you have to say for yourself? Dear me, it would appear that that disaster has in no way satiated your appetite. Some of that bite should be directed at my learned friend, I feel. Yeah. They should have at least had, like, a funny exchange for that. Well, they never he... expected somebody to do the manuscript there. <laughs> Why? It makes sense. He's like always desperate to know if Iris wrote good things about him. He doesn't. But. Yeah, I know. I it know. doesn't have I the know. manuscript. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I'm very surprised at Gregzy. There must have been a compelling reason for him to give away secrets, gay secrets like that. Well, what's the most important thing to the inspector? What could have motivated him to do it? Hmm. Well, most Scotland Yard inspectors that I know would put nothing above their duty to policing. So do we have some evidence that's related to the inspector and his duties, I wonder? Okay. Uh... Was it about the government secrets? I feel like we already did the newspaper ones. Would it be the newspaper? I'm not telling you what it is. Try the newspaper! 
No. We already read this. I'm not reading it again. What? I was gonna say I'm not. I'm not rereading this again. It's my my shame. <laughs> okay, let's talk this through. Um, see, because I know that I got multiple chances to get it wrong, I'm not as nervous about this. I just kind of want to figure it out. Um, yeah, we don't want to take too long on it though, because yeah, we're I not mean, even at the end yet. Um, is it in the first page or in the second page then? There's three pages. Is it in the first page or the second page? What? Is it in the first or the second page? There's three pages. I know, but I don't think it's in the third page. There's more than one things. So. <laughs> oh, there's multiple things you can show. Um. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier then. Okay, what evidence explains the nature of the alleged deal that he made with the witness? Um. Okay, next. Oh no, too much. Oh, I thought you were on the uh, next page. I just want to very quickly. That wouldn't be it. Next. Uh, next. 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 No. Uh, no, I really tied that. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 so the music box? No, the music disc. Music disc? Yeah. He wants the other disc. Inspector Gregson. Besides this murder, is it not true that you've been working on another very important case? What? Uh, get out now, sunshine. Is it possible this other top secret case? Is what allu what's alluded to in this newspaper article here. The classified secrets being leaked overseas from the Ministry of Justice. Oh, how the bleeding Nora could you? You got a good job. I'm Thank you. We discovered during the course of the trial the music box deposited at Windebank by Magnus McGilded. A special music box designed to play two discs at once. It seemed very likely now that encoded on the pair of discs that were in Mr. McGilder's possession. Are the leak classified secrets? So I put it to you, Inspector. In order to recover the second of the disc containing those secrets, you covertly made a deal with Mr. Graydon in which you exchanged the discs for details of the case. You, you little hug. Order, order, order! On the day of the incident, when we met you at Windebanks, you said this. I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGillard's down to the yard, thank you very much. So I hand it over. No, don't! <clears throat> no, don't! Don't give it to him! It's mine, that is! Mine! I'm sorry, miss, but anything belonging to McGill has to be taken as evidence now. Scotland Yard already knew at the time, isn't that right? That Magnus McGill was involved in the stealing of government secrets. My orders were recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the ministry and do it on the QT, strictly hush hush. And that explained why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the court, you objected so heavily, I presume. Because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. Blimey, not likely. I mean, I wasn't sure of it myself. I realized there was a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely, surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of these music box discs. You did indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness. Mm-hmm. You didn't abet this man in giving false testimony. There's no other way that Mr. Graydon could have known of the existence of the people. It's the only explanation. A deal was struck between these two men. If, and I stress, if, 
this sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth. It would mean that the second disc is, as we speak, in this very courtroom. Wait, what? In, in <laughs> this room? How could you possibly make a claim like that? Because Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? What does that supposed to mean, eh? A seasoned policeman. As a seasoned policeman, the inspector would have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would have not accepted the gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would have insisted on having the article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Good gracious, then you mean to say... Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his possession. He has the second disc actually on his person. The defense demands the inspector is searched at once. Definitely! They could have only struck a deal with each other when Ginny was testifying before. And Gregson hasn't moved from the witness stand since. My lord, please, order an examination of his personal effects immediately. Hmm. Well, Inspector. The young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He has insulted me and my profession quite enough. Hmm. However, if you'll put this matter to bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, then I'll happily submit to a body search. What? He's going to agree to it. I presume you're aware of the precipice of which you now teether, my learned student friend. You've made a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. If, following the search of, of the inspector's personal effects, no disc is found, you will be deemed unfit for court service. This trial will end. And my country's government will formally demand that yours that you are severely reprimanded. That sounds serious. Indeed, have a visiting student make such defamatory remarks about our country's most senior police force. It is not something Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening Runo because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. It's true. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. The disc must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. Very well, counsel. You know the implications, so let me ask you one final time. Y yes my lord. Do you still persist in formally re requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? Three choices. Uh, I would say search someone else. Search someone else? Yeah. Wonder your reasoning. Because I don't think he'd be so willing to let himself be searched if he actually had it. That you, you think this less rather than withdraw the request, so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, the defense formally demands a search be conducted. Well... Don't say you weren't warned. With your typical Nippany stubborn it may well land you in hot water this time. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. Fair enough. I got nothing to hide. Very well, then. Bailiff, conduct a search of the inspector's personal fact, please. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh. The defense demands a search, but not of Inspector Gregson. What? Uh, what's all this? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? Thought you wanted to search me. Mm. Mm -mm. No, no, Inspector, not you. Not you. Somebody else. Somebody else. What's the meaning of all this, eh? Lost at last, have you, Sunshine? The court should have to put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. 
Be quiet, all of you. All of you. <laughs> who, who said that? Oh, you. Be quiet, all of you. <laughs> Bruno is doing what you all told him to do, and having the courage of his convictions. So you should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith. Because that's the British way. Hmm. <laughs> well said, young lady. Indeed, this court is in awe of the Defense Council's conviction, and he eagerly awaits his next words. Hey, what? Now don't be hasty, my lord. I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today. I'm fairly sure that I know who has that disc at the moment. There's only one person it can be. Oh no, Mango! No! What happened to Mango? Mango said, yeah, col colonialism hype. Because colonialism. British way. It's the British way! No! Season crumpets! Take your land by force! Council, of whom do you request this search now? Uh. Lord Strongheart. Really? No, no, no. Well, careful, I'm gonna just no. click stop. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm gonna do your ridiculous guesses at this point. No, don't do my ridiculous guesses at this time. Uh, it's Nash. Yeah. Uh, Mango said tea crumpets and genocide. Mm. Tea crumpets and genocide. Mm. Uh, just what uh, the doctor ordered. Every afternoon. Every afternoon. Uh, why, tea. why Nash? Because they were they, he was like shaking him down and he was Man, putting it in. His you're, you're remembering all the little tiny interactions. Oh, trust me, I got the memory <laughs> of a goldfish. Of a what? Of a goldfish. Oh dang! I was hoping you'd forget what you said. <laughs> oh, my lord Mr. Oh my lord Mr. Nash is cooking <laughs> Well I never <laughs> Me <laughs> Very well then bailiff uh, Mingus is loving your voiceover It's going to st step AFK though But I'm a lurking Enjoy your lurk Mingo Enjoy your lurk See you later Restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects. Please, my lord. The spectre. Scott the Yard, um, has to object to this search. <laughs> Shut your insignificant mouth, you peasant! I am the captain. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Uh, in this courtroom, only the prosecution and defense have the authority to object. But, but Lord Van Zeeks. I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. But personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Ugh. Bailiff, carry out the search. <laughs> 